So let me ask you as a question, because I was just thinking about this this morning. You both are, are you both grew up on the East Coast. Yeah. Yes. So back then when some in the eighties, when some of these bands were coming, you know, when these band, the whole, when these bands were all coming up until in the book, until you got to the East coast version of this, which I, you know, this was my thing in the eighties. I was totally unfamiliar with the East coast version of what was going on on the strip. Um, how did you guys, how were you, I mean, aside from Poison, you know, who made it and, you know, Motley Crue and Rat and the bigger bands, but you, you talk about a lot of the, the bands that didn't make it that were West Coast bands, not originally, but that did the whole West Coast thing. How did you get so familiar with them? Uh, with the East Coast bands? No, the West Coast, because you oh. you're from the Oh, East having grown up on the East Coast. I mean, yeah. you know, I think there were just the, 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 there were just a few avenues to get this stuff right back then. Mm -hmm. So you, MTV, of course, and then you had your, your monthly magazines, your circus and hit parader, and then later mm -hmm. rip and you had metal edge faces, all this stuff. So I think if you were into this stuff back then, or at least the only way I knew how to approach it and the, my friends who were into it, it was just to absorb every morsel of it that you could. Mm -hmm. And like, you had your bands that you liked and you didn't like, but even the bands that I didn't like, I still read everything I could about them because you'd get your magazine, you would just read it front to back and then you'd right. tear it apart and put it up on your wall. Yeah. You were like 10 years old back. Then. So yeah, I mean, if yeah. you heard, you were seven when Looks That Kill came out. So mm -hmm. you so what well, you got, uh, you asked your mom for subscriptions to magazines or did you go? Yeah, to <laughs> or, or I just go to the store every week and buy them but, or every month and buy them. But like, mm -hmm. you know, even from seven years old on, like I... I just learned everything about all these bands and like you just, it was what you studied and basically lived. So I think, especially back then, I mean, you have, you kind of know where a band is from, but you don't necessarily, or at least I didn't think so much about who was a West coast band versus an East coast band. You know, I liked Motley Crue and I liked Twisted Sister and it didn't matter to me that one came from here and one came from there. Um, but yeah, you just, you figured out, it's funny, like you think, pre-internet like yeah how did you learn all this stuff but like you just did you know and you just you found these records and some I, I mean I searched for probably 15 years to find the leather records version of Too Fast for Love <laughs> and when I finally did it was like I found it in London like in like the mid 90s and I couldn't afford to buy it because they were selling it for like hundreds and hundreds of dollars and I remember begging them to <laughs> play it in the store just because I wanted to hear it because I've been, I had been trying to hear it for most of my life at that point and they wouldn't do it. But then like a few years later, you know, the internet was everywhere and like, I just downloaded it and that was that, you know, and then I heard it. Um, but you just, you just would you, devote your life to finding out this information and you would. And headbangers ball. I mean, every Saturday, yeah. you know, I, I was, once you're in and you sort of, become a completist like I mean I I can't I could not even venture to tally the number of bands I saw a video on Headbangers Ball and went and bought the record and you know the bands on Headbangers Ball a, most of those videos did not transcend into dial MTV and you know that was sort of like let's put it on here and see what happens mm -hmm. but you know like bands like Lily and Axe and Law and Order and things with dangerous toys, things that we don't even talk about in the band. You know, there was this one place, it was Headbangers Ball. And if you, 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 the amount of information that you could get just from faithfully watching that every week, which I did probably for four years in a row. Um, and I think that it's why also people who are into this music who are our age, um, you know, now it's difficult to talk to people about music, I feel like, because there's a million bands. And so like your odds of, of like, but there were, there were X number of bands that were played on Headbangers Ball over during those years. And like me, I know them and Rich knows them and everybody else because we were all watching the same thing. Mm -hmm. And even the ones that didn't make it, it's like, oh yeah, I love that band. I wonder what happened to them. So there was this common place that you congregated that was curated and much more finite than than the interwebs of today 